Welcome to howtocookthat.net, I'm Anne Reed and today I'm going to show you how to make a Minecraft cake and snacks to go with it for a Minecraft party. If you're not familiar with Minecraft, it's a game where you go around and create and build and explore a whole massive world. To start with, you're going to need to bake the actual cake and cover it in buttercream icing. If you look in the description below the video, there's a link to the blog where you'll find the recipes for the cake and the buttercream icing. To smooth out your buttercream, take some paper towel put it on the cake and then use a fondant smoother over the top to gently smooth off each side. Then remove the paper towel and repeat that on each side of the cube. To make the corners nice and sharp, place some paper towel on top of the cube and put a book or something flat resting on top of it. Then use some paper towel on the fondant smoother on the sides to smooth right into those corners. Next you're going to need to colour your fondant into four different colour browns, a light grey and some different coloured greens. If you've not worked with fondant before then you can watch the video on fondant basics. I'll link to that one at the end of this one. Put some baking paper over the top of the template and roll out your fondant to the size of the white square. Sticky tape the baking paper to the bench so it doesn't move and then trim off any excess edges so you can see your blue guideline the whole way around. Then using the lines in that blue section as a guide, cut your fondant using a pizza cutter into long straight strips. I found it easiest to use a second piece of plastic sheeting to cover the strips that were already cut so that they didn't lift up as you run the pizza cutter down. Once you've done all the strips, you need to turn the fondant around and repeat the process to cut them into squares. If you find that your fondant's starting to stick to the pizza cutter, then you just need to wash and dry the blade really well. Next, take a fresh sheet of baking paper and place it over the template. Rub some Crisco or butter or margarine in a thin layer all over the paper and this is going to help the fondant squares to stay in place exactly where you put them. Then take some paper towel and wipe off any excess. Sticky tape your baking paper to the bench, making sure you line up one edge of your baking paper with one edge of the white square. Then start placing your brown squares into place, mixing the different colours together and using a ruler to straighten up your sides. Once you get near to the top of your template, you're going to need to add in some green squares there as well. Once you've completely finished, brush the fondant with a little water. This helps them to stick to each other and it's also going to help them to stick to the cake. Slide your baking paper onto something thin but firm and then use that to lift it up and line up the bottom edge of your fondant with the base of the cake. Then carefully tilt it up and push it into position and use your fondant smoother to smooth it in place. Then slowly and carefully peel off your baking paper being especially careful with the squares at the edges. To cover the top of your cake, don't put any water on those green fondant squares. Just place a piece of cardboard on top and flip it over so the fondant is resting on the board. Line up one edge and then slide the board out from underneath it and gently peel off your baking paper. Then you need to do your other remaining three sides. After that if you've got any patience left you can use your leftover fondant squares to decorate small cubes of cake or your honeycomb chocolate coated pieces.